Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Ken Corolla, and it's a uh, privilege uh, to speak on our Town Council Bill at second stage uh, here this evening. And earlier on, on the plinth, um, I spoke about the fact that our constitution has been given quite an airing in this chamber over the past week, uh, from the misquoting of Article 13 here last week to um, Article 35 pertaining to the judiciary, to Article 33 on the Comptroller and Auditor General uh, when it came to his role in the investigation into Temple Moor and our work with the Public Accounts Committee. But there's another article, uh, Ken Corla, that has rarely quoted, and it's Article 28A, which deals with local government. And this article shows the importance of local government in terms of the delivery of services and indeed the very essence of what makes our communities, our towns and estates the very vibrant places they are to live in, to rear our families in and to indeed enjoy the very fabric uh, of the unique society that we live in. But it's an article that gets overlooked any time a government goes to meddle in the structures of local government under that much abused word reform. And Ken Corl, I am unashamedly an advocate of local government, having been first elected as a 21-year-old to Navan Town Council in 1999, and then subsequently to Meath County Council, and having served 17 years in the local government structure before coming to Dáil Éireann. Now, what happened in 2013 under the previous local government bill, under the name of reform by now Commissioner Hogan, was butchery, plain and simple. A butchery of democracy and the worst attack on our systems in 100 years. And at a European level, the lack of resources allocated and attention paid to local government manifested most acutely in Fine Gael's Putting People First policy document, which later came into the legislative realm, was heavily criticised by a 2013 Congress of Local and Regional Authorities of the Council of Europe report. And the abolishing of the town councils has masked the fact, of course, that there is a much deeper crisis in local government in terms of funding, because there was no increased general purpose grants allocated to counties when the town counties went. Oh no, that was a very good sleight of hand at that particular time. The money was kept back, and guys there thought that nobody would notice that the traditional block grants allocated to county towns weren't added to the overall figure of counties when those funds were allocated the following year. So the counties were actually impoverished even further. And on top of that, the same sleight of hand happened when it came to the allocation of roads funding. The money that traditionally had gone to the towns was not added to the county totals the year after abolition, and so in many cases, county found themselves down uh, many, many hundreds of thousands. In the case of our own county, Minister of English would know this was in case of one million in 2015 in the case of Meath. And people thought that nobody would notice. They did notice, because the councils were broke to begin with, and this only reduced their ability to offer services to people even further. Apart from anything else, the wiping away of those 80 town councils which had served their communities extremely well over the course of 115 years, with the stroke of a pen, showed how Phil Hogan and the government at the time simply did not understand how local communities worked and how they interacted with local councils. Now, there's no need for slagging off here because I think there's a broad acceptance, in particular when you see Deputy Brendan Howland in 2015 noting that it was the worst mistake of his time uh, in the last government and that what was done was wrong. So here tonight, through this bill, we in Fianna Fáil seek to reverse that wrong and re-establish the Town Council structure as a form of government in Ireland with the purpose of growing urban centres and giving our large towns where tens of thousands of people live a proper mechanism for the delivery of services that they deserve. Because that is the motivation here. Why bring something back that was abolished is a question being rightly asked of us. And the answer is because a gaping void has been left in terms of the needs of our people in these large towns. There's neither public reps or dedicated sets of officials in place to give vision and purpose to the towns in the years ahead. We now have engineers spread over multiple municipal districts the size of Dáil constituencies. People who are yearning out to actually get proper service, whether it comes to roads or water or sewers, they can't get an answer because engineers are dealing over a number of electoral areas. There are no dedicated and ring-fenced town council budgets, which in the case of many large towns or boroughs would have been in the realms of tens of millions. 
No dedicated statutory town development plans which can give the vision for people as to how their town is going to grow. And when it comes to money, there's no ability to retain the local property tax raised in the main from the pockets of people living in big towns and which is spread over big areas now, not retained within the area in which they are raised. And if there was a statutory council there, the ability of councils to retain those funds by the people who pay them money would be able to be delivered. And for the businesses, well, they know only too well the fallout from the abolition of town council. Walk down any main street, talk to a shopkeeper, because instantly we had a situation where the commercial rates of small and large businesses in every town in Ireland suddenly started to rise because in nearly all cases, the town commercial rates were lower than the county rate. And so now we're into a period of equalisation. And because the town councils were abolished, the town businesses, who are the main employers in the county, who keep vibrant town centres alive against a lot of odds, suddenly have had an additional charge put upon them. And that's going to continue over the next decade as part of this equalisation of rates. So the business people keep an Ireland alive outside of Dublin City know only too well what abolishing town councils meant for them. As I said, Cahirlock, I am firmly committed to see good local governance in place because I believe that they deliver on the ground the services that people require. I was asked today, Karen Corla, on the plinth of the press conference, Mr Deputy Castles, they're nothing more than talking shops. Well, in the case of my own town council and the many years I spent proudly serving on that, if the delivery of a €13 million Euro theatre, new swimming pool, gymnasium, 68-acre park, enterprise zone, enhanced town centre is the result of talking shops, it's a bloody good one, can Corla. That multi-million euro investment was all achieved in the space of a decade, during which I was privileged to serve as Mayor of Navin on two occasions. And at a time when the town council was recording annual surplus returns, while in stark contrast our county council was mired in debt. So I take immense pride in walking down the streets of my hometown now with my three young children and knowing that the town that they are growing up in, and indeed Minister English's children are growing up in, is a much better town in terms of the facilities for them than the one that I grew up in. And that is Cancorla and must be the litmus test as to whether a form of government is successful. Have we improved the lives of the people we serve? And if we can say that we have made tangible differences, then it has been a success. So considering the examples I have given, and that can be replicated in so many towns across Ireland, and my colleagues are here from Sligo, Nace, and Cavan and Kilkenny, one wonders about the motivation to abolish them in the first instance. Because over the next 20 years, our towns are going to grow larger and need to have dedicated budgets, development plans, and representation for them is all the more critical. So that the facilities which are lacking in so many areas and get covered as commuter stories in the papers and on TV actually get delivered. We want to see the town council system back in a strengthened fashion. And when you see the strong local government in places like France, Italy, Scandinavia, there is no reason why we cannot have it here. People have said to me, we're overrepresented in this country. Look at the stats, we're not. In France, one to every 118 is the ratio for uh, public reps to people. In Denmark, similar size to ourselves, it's one to every 1,100. In Ireland, it's one to every 2,800. We're the highest in the EU. UK is just the only one behind us at 2,600. And any public representative worth their salt will know from speaking to the people living in the large housing estates of 300 plus that are currently there and the ones that are going to be built into the future that we need to have the proper supporting infrastructure around them, from the very basic items to the bigger things like swimming pools, playing pitches. And if you have a large town, that is now part of a much wider and larger municipal district, then its ability to acquire that funding is diminished considerably. Now, in some cases, there are municipal districts which are the size of doll constituencies. The Kells electoral area in Meath is one fine example. It's not feasible for our local public reps to offer proper representation. We don't want to see the large towns where people are living starved of funding in a system that has already starved of funding and under-resourced in the first place. This bill is the first step in putting back in place a town council system that will be fit for purpose, so that the people living in the urban centres of this country, whether it be Kilkenny or Drogheda or Athlone 
or Navin will get the special focus that can only be delivered through the reintroduction of our town councils. I hope that the government and indeed all parties in the House will support the bill and seek not to obstruct but actually help people in urban Ireland that they are creating through the national planning framework and let us make sure that these towns we are building have the resources and the supports fit for purpose to help our people. Thank you, Ken Thank you, Deputy